What's up LEGO fans, my name is LEGO Man Cam, and recently I made a video talking about why I think 2020 was one of the worst years for LEGO Star Wars. But as I was reading the comments, so many of you mentioned that 2022 could be a real contender to be the worst. So let's look at all the sets from the year and see for ourselves. I'll be giving each set a score out of 10 and getting the average at the end of the video to give this year an overall rating on where it stacks up against the previous years we've looked at. With that being said, let's jump straight into it and we've got two of these little minifigure blister packs that were exclusive to the LEGO store. The first of which was the Defense of Hoth. This one came with three Rebel Troopers, which look kind of cool, but aren't super desirable. The builds were actually kind of nice. Uh, if I'm being honest with you, you get two cannon builds and then a larger dish turret, which you can put your minifigures on. And then the other figure pack was the one that everyone was really excited for. This was the Clone Trooper Command Station. It was a great way to get two regular Phase 1 clones, and then also get everyone's favourite, the classic Clone Commander, who also doubles as the pilot of the ship from the iconic Republic gunship, a uh, set from the original trilogy. The builds are again really nice, and I love getting the little command station. These sets were both pretty solid, honestly, but I just wish that they were regularly released retail sets so that everyone could buy them. So I'm going to give these a 7 out of 10. Next up, we've got the actual battle pack from the year. This is the Snowtrooper battle pack. This one has been said to be specifically designed to give everyone a heap of Snowtroopers to load into the UCS 8080 from the year prior. It's a decent selection of builds in this battle pack. You get a speeder, an e-web, and then a little mound of snow. And this was the first $20 battle pack at the time, so that definitely caused a lot of controversy. But I think if you compare this to something like the Mandalorian battle pack from this year, you actually get a lot more variety in the builds in this older set. It's not a super battle pack by any means, but it is decent enough, and I'm glad that it gave us that exclusive Hoth Scout Trooper minifigure, so I'll give this one a 7 out of 10 as well. Now we have the one micro fighter from the year. This is the Mandalorian Razor Crest. This one was inevitably going to happen as the show was doing really well at the time and probably it's the most popular piece of Star Wars media that we've gotten recently. This was a really nice cheap way to get the updated Mando minifigure as well. Um, and there's not a whole lot to say here. This one is about a 6 out of 10. To add to the Hoth collection, we got our first ever Hoth ATST. I think personally, my favorite part of this set is actually the probe droid, which looks really detailed and is by far the best minifig scale one we've ever gotten. The actual walker itself is fine, nothing too amazing to me, um, and LEGO seriously do need to figure out a way to get the legs into a decent walking position without falling over, as it's been like 20 years at this point, and all the ATSTs can do still is stand still. Overall, this is a decent set, and I do really like the snowy Chewbacca. It's a pretty cool little inclusion, um, but yeah, I'll give this one a 6 out of 10 as well. Now we have a pretty universally hated set because of its unjustifiable price. This is, of course, the Justifier. The actual ship is actually okay, um, but it's nowhere near worth $170. To me, this set kind of feels like something from maybe 10 years ago. It's got a lot of flimsy elements, and it's just really big without a lot of actual substance. I do understand that in order to get the play feature to work in this set, they had to make some compromises, but the lack of any interior space uh, really does deduct from making this sort of a more flagship set. The minifigure selection is okay, I would have preferred maybe one or two more, um, and maybe the rest of the Bad Batch in their Season 2 outfits could have been included here, but the minifigures that are included are all really nice and high quality, uh, really highly detailed, especially that new Cad Bane and the Toto 360 mold, which looks so cute. I do have this set in my backlog and I'll be looking to build it soon, I just need to find the right time, um, but overall, because of the terrible price, I'm going to go with a 3 out of 10 for this one. Next up, we have a set that was kind of a trendsetter. Uh, this is the Dark Trooper Attack. This one was originally rumored to be a Dark Trooper battle pack, but then we all found out it was $35 and we were scared we were getting a $35 battle pack. It actually turned out, of course, that this was the first of the playset diorama sets, with uh, obviously the second one sort of in this line being the Tangent 4 boarding diorama that came out earlier this year in March. This set came with three Dark Troopers, which were really good to get in a cheap set after Moff Gideon's Light Cruiser from the year prior. As well, we also got a brand new Luke Skywalker based on his appearance from the end of Mando Season 2. The build is it's okay here, it's quite fine, um, but it's not really worth $35. I think I would have liked to see this one at $25 or at least $30. Um, but yeah, the figures are all pretty good in this set, so I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10 just because of that price. 
Here is a set that I don't see mentioned very often, and it's actually one that is still on store shelves. This is the Mandalorian's N1 Starfighter, which is based off of the Book of Boba Fett. You get minifigures of Mando, Grogu, Pelimoto, and then a BD droid, as well as the actual Starfighter in the set for $60. Regardless of the price actually being way too high in my opinion, I still also don't actually like the look of the ship at all. The regular yellow color scheme I think works way better with a Nabri Starfighter, um, and also because LEGO is never going to make a fully chrome or drum lacquer silvered spaceship, uh, so the regular light grey here just makes it look really bland. There's also some stability issues with this one because of the awkward design, the fin on the back falls off all the time. Um, and yeah, if you can get this one on clearance, uh, I think I might pick it up, but otherwise, yeah, I'm not gonna be grabbing this one. This is a five out of 10. Another pretty underwhelming set is Boba Fett's throne room. This one just pales in comparison to Jabba's palace from 2012, which was way bigger and made much more of an impact. The build isn't terrible here. Uh, it's just not as good as something from 10 years ago, which is really hard to believe. The highlight here I think is the minifigures, with almost all of them being exclusive other than Fennec and Boba. I especially love the Quarren minifigure too, that headpiece is really awesome. So great to finally get that species in LEGO. Overall this is just a pretty forgettable set, but I do need to pick it up soon um, before it goes up in price too much because it has just retired. I also think it should have included the other Gamorrean guard because they were like my two favorite characters in the whole book of Boba Fett show. Um, but yeah, I'll give this set a 7 out of 10 as the minifigures definitely carry it. We then had the helmet collection from 2020 continue with three new entries to the series. We got the Red 5 helmet, the Mandalorian, and the Dark Trooper helmet. I like the look of all of these to be honest. Um, I think it's pretty fascinating how the Red 5 helmet goes together because it doesn't actually have like a head or a base to be built around. But again, it does then kind of make it stick out and stand out from the rest of the collection. The Mandalorian helmet is somewhat of a reskin of the Book of Boba Fett one from 2020. But I think the drum lacquered silver works really nicely here uh, to sort of give it a better look. Uh, also the cheek design adds some nice depth I think to the model. The Dark Trooper is my least favourite here. I think it is quite stud heavy on the top uh, and I don't think it blends well with kind of the curved and then smoothed off surfaces of the bottom section of the build. The red eyes are nice, I think that does make it look really menacing. I'm just not sure why out of all the Star Wars characters and helmets they chose to make a Dark Trooper which only appears in like a couple of episodes of The Mandalorian. Overall, I think these three are kind of decent helmets and they're just not my favourites of the line by any means, so I'll give these ones an average of 7 out of 10 as well. Now that we're about halfway through the video, if you are enjoying, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. We're so close to 2,000 subscribers and every bit of support really helps. There were then three diorama sets that were released this year too, kicking off the line. All three were based on the original trilogy. You had the micro scale Death Star Trench Run, which was a pretty boring set in my opinion. It does look nice, it's just not for me. I'm not a fan of micro scale. You then had two minifigure compatible sets, which were the Dagobah Training and the Trash Compactor. The Dagobah Training looks really nice to me. It's just expensive for what you actually get. I know it does have a good price per piece ratio, but then when you do think about just a few years ago, we got a Yoda's Hut set for a third of this price, it does kind of make you think. The X-Wing in the Swamp also does look kind of cool to me, um, and then like the muddy R2-D2 looks really awesome. The Trash Compactor Diorama is a little bit more plain than the Dagobah one. It does look like the scene, don't get me wrong, but it's just that the scene was a muddy grey and brown box, so it's just not the most visually appealing thing in the world. The compacting feature is done really well though, I like how that goes together, and I love the inclusion of R2 and C-3PO around the back. I'm going to give all three of these dioramas combined a 7 out of 10 as well. One of the two UCS sets from the year was the Razor Crest, um, to just add to the insane amount of Mandalorian content that we were getting. This is a $600 UCS set and I can't help but think that they could have gone smaller for this one. Sure, this does look really nice um, and it's not a terrible price by any means for a UCS set, but it is just really expensive at the end of the day. Not many people have $600 lying around. The figures are pretty cool here as well, um, like the Mithril and Quill look really awesome, even though Quill's head, I don't know, looks kind of stretched out. But again, Lego just needs to kind of make up their mind with what they're doing with making exclusive UCS minifigures. I don't really care whether they want to do them or don't want to do them, I just want it to be consistent so that people know what they're getting into. It's a little unfortunate that the ship got blown up uh, actually in the show just before the set came out, but it is a really nice design and if I had the space or the money for it, I would totally buy it. So I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. 
This one is a 0 out of 10, I have nothing else to say. Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter is a decent looking set and at $30 it doesn't feel too overpriced. I love the minifigure selection in this one too, getting a torn way is an amazing figure and then the updated Obi-Wan Kenobi looks really awesome too as well as R4 is just a regular inclusion. The stud shooters don't bug me too much, so I'll give this one a 9 out of 10. I just wish it came with Jango Fett, but maybe that's me being a bit selfish. One of the two Kenobi sets is up next. This is Obi-Wan vs Darth Vader, and what can I say really, this set is just pretty bad. Ned B, the droid, is by far the best part of this set. Uh, it's just such an awesome looking minifigure with such intricate new molds. But when you look at the build here, what you're mostly paying for, it's just so boring for $50. It's essentially just a giant piece of ground. Um, and I mean, if I were a kid who was playing with my Lego still, I think I could just imagine a piece of ground. I don't really need to spend $50 on it. It's not like this is a diorama set either, so it doesn't really look that good on display. And you've got these really big, massive gray slope pieces at the front, which just look really bad to me. This is a three out of 10 for me. If it didn't include Ned B, it would have been like a one out of 10. The Inquisitor Transport Scythe is at the complete other end of the spectrum though. What a great set for $100. I personally have this one on display in my room and it looks so good. The pure black with the red windscreen work beautifully together. The ship also has so much playability and interior space compared to something like Krennic Shuttle from 2016. The figure selection is also top notch with four exclusive figures all with capes, new molding and prints. And yeah, this set is just really great. So I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. BD1 was another lineup in the buildable droids collection. And I think he looks really great. It's a really cute little build for such an iconic droid from the Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor games. And I just wish that the actual minifigure compatible BD1 that came in this set also came with the Cal Kestis in the Star Destroyer later this year. Anyway though, this build is just really nice. Uh, I think for $100, it's not a terrible deal, but personally, I'm not a really big buildable character fan, so I will give this one an eight out of 10, but it is a great set nonetheless. Now we have a real heavy hitter. This is the ATTE Walker. What an incredible set. This was my first ATTE and it did not disappoint and it's probably my favorite set from the year personally. I just find myself staring at this from time to time. It just looks so good. The minifigures are pretty decent. Uh, I would have liked maybe a Jedi or two to come with it, but to finally get Commander Cody in phase two armor was a dream come true for so many of us and they did a really great job. He looks amazing. Yes, this is the set that introduced helmet holes. Yes, I would prefer to get clones without them, but they don't distract me too much and I am okay with them because they do give kids the opportunity to customize their clones, which I think is really important. I just want Lego to make sure that they include the accessory packs with every set that comes with clones. Anyway, for $140, it is overpriced, which is why I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. It is a great set, but I do have to take price into consideration here. This is why it ranks below the Inquisitor transport site. Our only ever Andor set is up next, and this is a $70 set called the Ambush on Ferrex, which came with three minifigures, 679 pieces, and a build of an Imperial gunship and a speeder bike. I really love this set, if I'm being honest. Um, it's so small and cute and compact, and it just packs a lot into a really small package. In saying that though, for the size, it's so overpriced. Yes, you do get a lot of pieces, but the end product and overall amount of stuff is so small. The figures look really great here, especially Cassian and Luthan Rail, but just because of that really terrible price, I am gonna have to give this one a six out of 10 because looking at what you actually get for the price, there's so much more on the market that is worth your money. With just three sets left, let's quickly take a look at the advent calendar from this year, where you get a summer vacation Darth Vader, which was an interesting choice. You also get a C-3PO and R2-D2 wearing Christmas sweaters, which look adorable. And then the Santa gonk droid is also really funny. I'm gonna give this set an eight out of 10 because for an advent calendar, it's actually pretty decent with three exclusive figures and that gonk, as well as a whole bunch of other builds and minifigs too. We then have the greatest UCS set of all time, one that fans had been craving ever since the mere thought of it was possible. This is of course, the UCS Luke's Land Speeder. No, but seriously, this is a fine set. It is hilarious though how much of a meme this set is and the fact they actually made one is really funny. I do hope that we get this C-3PO figure in a set soon. 
But as I've said before in so many other videos, I'm not a massive UCS fan, but I can appreciate that this one does actually look really good. I really like the coloration of it, and I think the engine builds look really nice. I just wish it was 200 rather than 240, because I think that was just pushing the price a little bit too far. I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10. Now the last set, which also happens to be one of my personal favorites from the year, this is the Lego and Target exclusive set, the Republic Fighter Tank. This came with an incredible Mace Windu figure, as well as three 187th clones, who all look so amazing in their purple armor. The fighter tank is actually a really nice build in my opinion. Yes, it isn't probably as accurate or compact or as highly detailed as the 2017 one, but this one again, kind of like the Justifier, feels like an older Star Wars set, and sometimes bigger is better. $40 is definitely too high though. I would have liked it at 30 or maybe 35. Overall, I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10 though, because regardless of that high price, it's still just a really cool set. So that's it for 2022. With all the scores added up, we have a score of 6.5 out of 10. Now I have gone back and worked out the scores for every other year that I've looked at, and 2022 comes in at the bottom in last spot, just barely behind 2020, which is at 6.6. .6. If you've got a year that you would like me to look at, leave a comment down below and make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.